Okay, this is Dennis Province from the National Resource for Quantitative Proteomics here with Stephanie Byram, and we are going to go through some data. Um, the final report that many of you are going to receive uh, is full of a lot of information, and we're going to go through uh, what that looks like so that you can get a taste of the types of tools and uh, tables that you're going to be getting so that you will have uh, a better understanding of the questions that you need to ask and uh, the way that you uh, set up your data on the front end. So take it away, Stephanie. All right, thank you, Dennis. So today I'm gonna give you an overview of an example data set and what the results are and how you interpret those results. So as you can see here, I have a, a folder that is pulled up on the screen and there's several different folders and then one Excel file that's sort of outside of those folders. This is our typical report that you will receive. The proteonorm consists of a plot for normalization methods. I'm not gonna go into those details today, but specifically focus more on the um, differential expression results. So there's also a QC report that has figures for your um, PCA dendrograms and just really getting a, a good quality check on the data looking for any sample outliers that may need to be removed. So today though we're going to focus mostly on what you're most interested in which is what the results look like. So there is a results file that we put into Excel that is the summary sort of your master file of results. This is going to contain all of the proteins that were identified in your study. It's going to contain your normalized values, for each individual sample. And a lot of, lot of information is, is within this file. And I'm gonna fix this. So as you can see here, we have our metadata, which in, consists of Uniprot expression IDs for the protein identifiers. This matches to uniprot.org database. So whichever database we search, that's the accession numbers associated with that protein. We also pull out the um, description of the protein, the full name of it. And we also pull out the full FASTA header from that particular database. So you can see the SP is from the Swiss Pro database, the Uniprot accession. It has the gene symbol associated with that protein name. Um, GN is often found in the FASTA header that tells you your, your gene symbol. So we have the all of this metadata information for all of your proteins that are identified in a study. We also have the LEMA results, which are your statistical results. And I'm gonna go over what these column headers mean in just a moment. And then we also include every sample that was included in your study, we include their normalized intensity values. Depending on the sample prep method utilized, these values can be either the MS1 intensity values or they can be MS3 from a TMT multiplex project. So the um, top header, I usually try to clarify what intensities are being used for this project. So the exclusive intensities, this is from a DIA project that we're showing. So for the LEMA results, Lima provides um, a lot of metrics from their, their top table output report. So we're running a linear model for the statistical comparisons. And within this model, we have um, our contrast set up. In this particular example, I'm showing a fish oil versus a controlled diet study. So the order of the sample names in the label is very important. This is the order of how we're going to do the statistical calculations for your full change. So in the labels of the plots that you're given will indicate the order that the full change was calculated. For instance, in this case, we're comparing fish oil versus a control. So anything that is a positive full change value is upregulated in this first group listed. So a positive full change means that this protein is increased in this first group compared to the control. Majority of projects we do treated versus control um, unless you specify otherwise. So 
So the uh, most important variables within the lemma results that we want to look at is log FC. And this is a log two fold change value. It is a base two fold change. This, we, if you'll notice, we ha I have highlighted here values in red expression. And then at the bottom, we have values in green. What we do is we try to flag anything that is significant with a fold change greater than two. If it's up, we flag it as red. If it's down, we flag it as green. And this is just a, a way of being able to sort through your master list to find, find your proteins that are upregulated or downregulated in an easier fashion. So the, a log two fold change of one equals a two fold change. And this is why you'll see that our cutoff is at the at value of one. And it's the same for the down, down regulated proteins. So about a negative one, this corresponds to a twofold down regulation. Now what's next to this is our confidence intervals. These confidence intervals are the left and right confidence scores of our estimate of the full change. So this will provide a range of the values for that full change. And the tighter these values are to each other, the more precise that full change calculation is. And so it kind of gives you a measure of how confident are we in our full change result. And if you'll notice on this very first one, we have a really high full change and kind of a wide range of confidence interval. But if you'll look over at the samples, you'll see that there are some missing values in that particular protein. So it's influenced based on some missing values in samples and will inflate your full change a little bit. So with that, we also have the p-value. The unadjusted p-value takes into account this estimate range of the confidence interval. It's using the standard error and calculating that in with a moderated t-test to give you the p-value. So the p-values, you'll notice if, if this range of confidence intervals are both above zero or are both less than zero, then you get a significant p-value. If you have confidence intervals that split across a zero range, you'll notice that your unadjusted p-value is not significant. So those are, are really kind of tied together. So your p-value is a really important very, uh, output. Then we also do a Benjamin Hockberg multiple test correction of the p-value. And this is your adjusted p-value. Same thing as a FDR loss discovery rate p-value. And this uh, will help us to see what are our most significant proteins in the, in the study. And so we, we have these little flags here at the top of our Excel file where you can easily sort based on color, what's significant, our smallest to largest, and it just helps you to easily get to your top significant results in your database file, in your file. The other flag that is really helpful are these two, these last two columns. This is an added flag that we include to mark whether this protein is significant by full change and either the p-value or the adjusted p-value. So I have a flag that says adjusted p-value and full change or a flag with just the p-value and full change. Therefore, you can kind of, um, instead of having to sort this two times, we just have this little flag here to get to our, our significant list. So we have this little filter, you can remove the zeros and then the top results will show up and this is your significant list that it passes unadjusted p-value and the full change and it makes it a lot easier to look at your results. Is the critical p-value up below 0.05? Yes, so your significance threshold is, we set it at a full change greater than two and an adjusted p-value less than 0.05. Okay. So there's our flag. So this is our master file that has all of your results and what's, um, we put this in here so that if you need to make any more heat maps to display the expression of your proteins of interest, you can utilize these normalized values to create any, any visualization that you need later.
So with that, we also have this Lehman results folder that includes all of the statistics results that I just showed you in the master file. These are just the individual files from this, the output. Um, the master result has all the same information. We just made it easier to visualize with all the metadata. And then we also have just the significant list based on either no adjusted, the unadjusted p-value or the FDR adjusted p-value significant list. So those are extra files in there if you like to have them. We also have the TIFF images for MD plots and uh, volcano plots. And these are your visualization plots. Let's see if my computer's gonna work here. Yes. So we have um, for the MD plot, we're looking at the average expression of all of the samples within that data set, the average log two intensity versus the full change information. And then what is highlighted in red and blue is the p-value information. So with the MD plot, you actually get three layers of information. How abundant that protein expression is along the x-axis versus what's the change in values between your conditions with the full change. And then we also have uh, the p-value information that says how tightly, how reproducible your replicates are in your data. The other plot is just the um, standard volcano plot, which has your p-values and your uh, full change information. So these dotted lines is the stringent cutoff that we set with a two-fold change for this uh, vertical line. And then you have the uh, 0.05 p-value cutoff for the horizontal dotted line. So this, you can quickly see which ones are your most significant proteins of interest. And the um, label on the y-axis will indicate whether this was done with the adjusted p-value or the unadjusted p-value for your results. Now, the best part is really these um, folders here called volcanic plots and MD plots. These are interactive plots of all of the data. And it's really critical to download this entire folder that contains the um, CSS and the JS folders in order for this file to work. It's pulling out the information from within these folders to actually plot your data. So again, we'll have um, two different plots for each comparison in your study. And this is mainly just to plot either the unadjusted or the adjusted p-value, depending on how stringent you want to be with your analysis. So I'm gonna pull up the FDR adjusted volcano. And this opens up in a Chrome browser, just using a, a standard browser. And what you'll notice is we have our, our same volcano plot that I just showed you, but now it's interactive. So if I click on a dot in this plot, it's going to show up with the individual replicates, their log two expression for each sample within each of the groups. And so you can clearly see that, yes, there's a difference, a clear difference for this protein within these two groups, and it's consistent within my replicates. The other um, important thing you'll notice, if I look at this one, it has a high full change, but the p-value is not super significant. And if you'll notice, there's some samples here that had a missing value. So this will help you quickly identify those that may be just due to some missing data and it's inflating the full change. But then sometimes your low abundant proteins are gonna be in this range where they have a little bit of missing data just due to being a low abundant protein and they can be really important biologically. So I don't automatically just remove those from the first analysis. If there's a particular protein that you wanna look for in your data set, we have a search tool. So you can just type it in here and then double click it in the table below and it will highlight where that protein is found in the plot above and automatically show you your expression for each of the replicates. So this has become a, a pretty handy tool to start digging into more of the biology of your project. So with that, I think we also have our MD plots. 
which do the same thing. It's the same type of situation where we have the interactability to be able to search these plots. And so it's inter these proteins here on the left side of our y axis or x axis are going to be your lower expressing proteins. And you can zoom in by just clicking it within the, the plot. You can start zooming in and seeing different um, proteins that are kind of your, usually your, your lower expressing proteins of interest and really drilling in on some of those differences. So, and then you can reset to see the entire, entire plot. So again, this one just adds that added layer of the abundance of the protein expression along with your full change information and then the p-value on top of that. Can we, is that table filterable down below there, it looked like? It's not filterable, it's just searchable. Searchable, okay. Right. Yeah, so you, you can search in here, but um, I think, let me see if I do this. Yeah, I don't think it um, filters. But where yet. it says adjusted p-value there, can I click on that and it'll sort those? Yes, it will sort. So okay. you can you can sort. Um, and then you can see at the bottom the number of proteins that are oh, included okay. in this, uh, in your total results. Again, good point. Uh, as I said before, for the full change information and how you interpret the full change is dependent, the, this label is gonna tell you that directionality. So group listed first is gonna be the positive red full change information compared to control. So that this protein is upregulated in visual compared to control, whereas blue it's down in the visual compared to control. And if you forget, you can see that in these expression plots fairly quickly, that it's up in the control, down in the visual. If I had two different treatments and a control, will I get plots like this? Will be individual for each question asked? Yes, so you'll see there's this uh, number, I've got it listed number one, so this is the first comparison for this study. If there's multiple comparisons you wanna make, we'll just list them in order, one, two, three, or four. And then um, in the email, I'll, I'll list out, these are the comparisons that, that we did for this, this study. So uh, it's important so that I tell you what I wanna compare before you do this. It's very important to tell us what comparisons you want and in which order you want to see your full change. Uh, whether it's treated versus control or vice versa. Uh, there's, that's very critical information that we need upfront to do a proper analysis. The other things to keep in mind is um, batching, whether these were prepared on different days, um, if you age, gender, any of those other little factors that may influence your statistical results. So all of that information is really critical for us to know up front. Absolutely. And there is a, we'll put this in the notes, but there is a top table Lima description of all of the, uh, the, the values that are present in this statistical results. Uh, this is will be kind of notes for you. Yes. <laughs> Um, so overall, that is the, the main results that are delivered upon the end of our analyses. And then we, it does look like there's a lot of uh, files within these, um, within the report, but that's really in case you need to go do some other type of analyses in the future, you have another bioinformatician work on some figures for your manuscripts, all of the data that is required for publication is uploaded and given to the end user. That was Stephanie Byram, the lead on the bioinformatics team here at the National Resource for Quantitative Proteomics. We thank you for watching this video and we look forward to working with you again soon.